Welcome to Knowledge Update Channel. Recently, on 17th August, government has issued RODTP, the scheme guidelines and tariffs. This RODTP, that is remission of duties and taxes on exported products, is going to replace or it's already replaced MEIS with effect from 1st January 2021. United States of America has complained with respect to non-compliance of WTO and it was argued that the incentive scheme provided by government of India is not in agreement with what is being agreed in WTO. With this objective, India has revised the incentive scheme and that is effective from the current calendar year that is from 1st January 2021. So for exporter, if you are export of goods, this is very critical for you to understand that what this scheme is all about, which are the benefits available, who is eligible, which are the rates provided and what is the process to cover. So this particular video is briefly going to cover on very, very important aspects of RODTEP scheme. Let us look at first to whom it is applicable. This is applicable to every exporter of goods. There is no turnover limit. Anyone, whether you are manufacturing or otherwise, as far as you are exporter of goods without any turnover limit, you are eligible to get the benefits under a road tap scheme. However, can you note that? There is a list of ineligible units is provided. There are around 15 items have been specified that includes 100% EOU, deemed exports, SCZ, which are ineligible to get the scheme benefits. Let us understand the rates which are specified. So on 17 August, the tariff rates has been specified which has 8,555 tariff lines and primarily these are based on percentage of FOB. The average rates we are ranging from 0.01% to 4.5% that is a quite lower compared to the earlier MEI scheme where the average rates were from 2% to 7%. As the scheme itself suggests about the remission of duties and taxes. So that covers every duties, taxes, levies of a central, state and local that are being used, that are being incurred for the purpose of export of goods. Certain examples of the duties which are eligible to be remitted, eligible to be get benefited in which includes VAT or excise duty on fuel used in transportations, electricity duty, municipal tax, property tax, plus uncreditable GST, section 17, section 5, like food, beverages, verse contract, which are uncreditable. These all are the few examples where you are eligible to get the duties remitted under this scheme. Now let us understand the further process with respect to the documents, shipping bills, documents which are required and the procedure for thereof. So I request CA Devendra Bansali to guide us on this aspect. Uh, in this slide, uh, we understand the importance of the shipping bill and the process of the claim. The whole process is divided into the five parts. First, the claim in the shipping bill. It is mandatory for the exporter to indicate in their shipping bill whether or not they intend to claim RODTP on their export item. Uh, there is a separate section in the application where the exporter have to give the information uh, type and information code uh, whether he want to uh, avail the RODTP benefit or not. After that, he had necessarily submitted the declaration. The declaration combined of the three things. First, he followed the also the declaration of the RODTP. Second, uh, that uh, RODTP mentioned it, the tax and duties 
so he is availing only debt uh, tax and duties third he maintained the proper documentation uh, for audit purpose as per the custom tariff act uh, after the submission of the declaration a step to process of the claim the shipping bill with the rodtp and or the drawback claim will uh, now be routed to the office of intervention based on the risk based uh, uh, target by the rsm the all the shipping bill will send it to the rsm after the ejm is filed step 3 after the gathering all information on the basis of the shipping bill and others uh, the uh, the officer will generate the score the step 4 once the dtp score is generated the credit allowed will be available between the ic gate login of the exporters to claim and convert the export script uh, so step 5 the after the convert to the step script the exporter has to utilize of the script in the import uh, this script can be used for the payment of the import due to as would be notified by the cbic uh, there is another option also whether he, he he can transfer this script to the any other ic uh, ic holder where he will able to use this script in the bill of entry the same way as uh, other duty script issued by the dgft uh, for the claiming the benefits Uh, under this uh, scheme, the, as organization, we require the primarily four documents. Uh, first, the class three individual DSC. Uh, second, uh, we have to member in an export consul as the registration income membership certificate. And uh, remaining two things, as per the each transaction, the first is the shipping bill, and the second is the electronic uh, bank re- realization certificate uh, that is EBRC. Thank you, Devendra. So this actually provides you four action points. First, identify are you eligible. Look at the guidelines. Look at your product which you are exporting, assessor code, and which rate you are eligible to get as benefit. Second, documents, shipping bills. What is to be changed? Which kind of documents required? Because this scheme is effective from first January 2021. so you need to plan for that thing third need to set up a process within your company with respect to ensuring that there is no issue with respect to documentation and ensure that you are you are able to claim and get the benefit which you are eligible for that so with this Uh, my best wishes to all of you and uh, thank you each one of you for your patience uh, time any questions any comment feedback please uh, write here thank you once again